All right, if you're going to use a splitter to divide up your TV antenna signal, here's a few things you should know. The splitters that are easiest to explain are the ones that divide the signal up in an even number, for example, two-way, four-way, or even eight-way. All they do is take the original signal in from the antenna and then split it up evenly amongst each output. So for example, a two-way splitter will give you 50% and 50% at each output, a four-way, 25% at each of the outputs, and an eight-way, only 12.5% at each output. So what that means is, is that when you use a splitter, there's gonna be lots of loss at all of the outputs. Now, splitters don't use percentages to show how much loss or signal you're getting at each of the outputs. They use dB ratings. And you can see here on this two-way, it says three and a half dB and three and a half dB. So the signal is split evenly amongst each of these. And a three and a half dB loss is equal to a 50% signal reduction. So that's why each of these says three and a half dB. They're each getting 50% of the original signal. For a four-way, the loss is gonna be twice as great. So the loss says seven dB at each output which is 25% of the original signal for each of the outputs for a four-way. And then here on the eight-way, the loss would double again, meaning that there's 14 dB of loss at each of the outputs on this eight-way splitter. Now, because the loss is equal at all the outputs on each of these splitters, it doesn't really matter where you connect the coax cable to. What I mean is, is that connecting a shorter run of coax or a longer run of coax to any one of these outputs is not going to make a difference in terms of minimizing signal loss when it comes to using a splitter that splits the signal evenly. However, if you're using a three-way splitter, then cable length does matter. And this is because with a three-way splitter, the signal is not split equally amongst all three outputs. Now, conventional wisdom would tell you that three outputs that means the signal will be split up one third, one third, one third. Not the case though. With a three-way splitter, normally they are structured like this one here, which has the input and then a 3.5 dB loss on this output, but then the loss doubles on these last two. And here's why that is. I sacrificed this dollar store splitter to show you the inside. Now this is what you're gonna see inside most conventional splitters unless you use a really high quality one that has some kind of circuitry you're just going to see some wires and little ferrite cores here now here's the input here and that input wire gets split up two ways and half of the original signal goes to this output so that's your 3.5 db loss but then that second split gets split again here so that's how you end up with 50 percent signal here 25 and 25. So for the three-way splitter, cable length does matter. You wanna connect the longest run in your system to this terminal here, 3.5 decibels, because it has twice as much signal as the other two here. And then you can use these other two 7 dB outputs for the shorter cable runs in your system in order to minimize loss. Not all splitters are gonna have these dB labels on them, so how can you tell which one is which? Well, if you look at this one here, the input's here, and the strongest output is right here, closest to it. In this one here that I took the back off of, same thing. You have the input, and you have the first output there. That's the first split, and then that second split feeds these two outputs. They're gonna be the weaker ones, just like this setup here. Of course, I could be wrong about that, but most conventional splitters are pretty much made the same way, but not all. Keep in mind that a passive splitter like one of these is only going to work well if you actually have enough signal at the antenna to split to more than one TV. If you have your antenna connected to only one TV right now and you're getting pixelation or channel dropout, then that's a problem with your antenna and that needs to be fixed before you can think about splitting the signal. A couple of other things to keep in mind. In some cases, a splitter will not work on its own, so you might need to use a good quality pre-amplifier at the antenna to hold that signal 
so it can reach the splitter after traveling through the coax cable or possibly a distribution amplifier, but both of those are beyond the scope of this video. Check the description and the pinned comment for more information about TV splitters and TV amplifiers and stay tuned to my channel until next time.